So when thinking about the structure of an antibody or an immunoglobulin, you know that there are two heavy chain proteins, two light chain proteins, and you know the different domains, hopefully, of the antibody, right? You've got the antigen binding domains. Those are at the tips where you have the variable region of the heavy and light chain come together to make a 3D structure that hopefully will bind an antigen. Now, in the uh, heavy chain region, you've got this uh, region called FC for the constant region of the heavy chain. Now, this is a really important region for talking about antibody effect effector function because many things bind this region. We saw in the previous video the Bramble receptor binding the IgG region, FC specifically, FC, FC gamma region. So many things bind the FC regions of antibodies. So if you're talking about uh, IgG, it's made from the FC gamma uh, DNA, so we call it the FC gamma region. If you're talking about IgA, that's made from the constant alpha, so we call that the FC alpha region. If we're talking about IgE, that's made using the constant epsilon DNA, so we call that the FC epsilon region. And it's important to talk about this uh, nomenclature because of these things called FC receptors, which we actually introduced in the last video. We're going to talk more about in this video. FC receptors are proteins that bind to various specific FC regions. There are many FC receptors. I don't want you to learn all of them, but I'm definitely going to want you to learn a couple of them. So the ones in this video are the important ones. So let's start off with IgG. So IgG can combat effect an infection a number of ways. One way we've discussed previously is when IgG binds a pathogen, uh, the uh, C1 molecule of complement can bind the FC um, gamma regions and trigger the classical pathway of complement activation. Uh, IgG can also fight a, uh, help, help us fight a pathogen in a number of different ways. The second way is when it attaches to a pathogen, it can call over a phagocyte, such as a macrophage or a dendritic cell or a neutrophil. And on the surface of these cells are many different types of receptors. Here's a new one, the FC gamma R1 receptor. So this is a protein found on the surface of phagocytes and the FC gamma R1 receptor protein binds the FC gamma region of IgG. So if a pathogen is covered in IgG, that will attract phagocytes over. And what's the phagocytes going to do when it engages the antibody? Bring in that pathogen via phagocytosis. So this process of covering a pathogen in antibody or something, making it more attractive to phagocytes, that is called opsonization. We saw that with complement. If you cover pathogen complement and phagocytes uh, will eat it with higher efficiency, that's opsonization. Same thing with antibodies. You cover a pathogen and an antibody, specifically IgE, no, 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 IgG, that's going to make it be phagocytosed with higher efficiency. So that's opsonization. So phagocytes, such as macrophages, dendritic cells, and neutrophils, we now have lots of receptors on their surface. LPS receptor, MANOS receptor, so they could identify a pathogen that way. Um, and phagocytosis complement receptors, they could identify complement on the surface of the pathogen. But FC receptors, like FC gamma R1, a great way to uh, phagocytose a pathogen. So phagocytes have these receptors. They also have FC alpha receptors. FC alpha, what's that going to bind? It's going to bind the FC region of IgA. So we talked about IgA can exist as a monomer or a dimer. When it exists in monomer form, it can bind to a pathogen and bind to, at the same time, the FC alpha receptor triggering uh, phagocytosis. Therefore, IgA can also be used during opsonization. So those are two examples by which uh, the FC regions of antibodies are really important for triggering something such as opsonization. Uh, another FC receptor I'd like you to know is the FC gamma R3 receptor found on natural killer cells, NK cells. So NK cells are um, lymphocytes. And we talked about them earlier in innate immunity because we said they can identify a pathogen that is infected by a virus. So how do they do that? 
Well, they could do that using their FC gamma R3 receptors. Let's see how. So here are some body cells. And let's say you make antibodies against the virus. And the virus is trying to hide out in the cell. Now, do antibodies go into cells? No. Antibodies don't go hunting for antigens inside of cells. Antibodies exist in your humors, humoral immunity. So they're in your fluids, your, extra, your interstitial fluid, for example, here. So that body cell that's infected by a virus, it may display some of those pieces of virus on the surface. So a virus likes to um, replicate, and in its life cycle, it might have entered the cell and left some proteins on the cell surface, or might be leaving the cell, budding off, and it might have proteins on the surface of that cell. So if we happen to make IgG against those proteins, we can identify that cell as being infected. So IgG could be attaching to antigens found on the surface of your human cells. Now, how are we going to get rid of the cell? Well, the nice thing is that the uh, NK cells have these receptors, FC gamma R3. That binds the FC region of IgG. And when NK cells engage IgG, uh, which is stuck to the surface of a body cell, NK cells will trigger apoptosis of that cell. So that's one way by which NK cells can identify a cell infected with a virus. If the cell is covered in IgG and the FC gamma receptor, FC gamma R3, engages the IgG, the NK cell can identify and kill the infected cell. Great. Um, last FC receptor that we'll talk about is the um, FC epsilon receptor. And this brings us to granulocytes, such as mast cells. How does a mast cell identify a pathogen? Well, mast cells have a number of receptors on their surface. Toll-like receptors, complement receptors. A receptor they're going to have on their surface that involves antibodies is called the FC epsilon receptor 1. So what's this going to bind? Well, no surprise, it's going to bind the FC epsilon region of IgE. So when a, a pathogen is, uh, stimulates the production of IgE, and many pathogens that stimulate its production are parasites, IgE will attach to the surface of a mast cell. Now this is interesting because uh, don't we usually have pathogen first and then antibody binding to it? Uh, this is one of the unique FC receptors whereby it has such high affinity for the FC region that the antibody binds the cell first. It binds the FC receptor first. So mast cells in your body would look like this, and if a pathogen comes crawling by, then the mast cells would um, use these FC, uh, R, FC epsilon R1 receptors with their IgE stuck to it, to cluster toward the pathogen. So this is actually, it looks like B-cell receptor crosslink, but this is not a B-cell. It's a mast cell using IgE to crosslink. So this is actually called IgE crosslinking. And when this occurs, the, path, the mast cell will degranulate. It'll release histamine, it'll release toxins, and we're gonna actually get into these, into the last unit of immunology in this course. Um, so granulocytes will degranulate uh, via IgE crosslinking, and IgE is stuck to the FC epsilon receptors on the surface of mast cells. You also find FC epsilon receptors on the surface of basophils and eosinophils. So IgE can be bound to them, and IgE can be used to recognize pathogens by eosinophils and basophils, and they will also release toxins which will help kill uh, pathogens. Like I said, these actually, the FC, Epsilon, and IgE, we tend to talk about later because they're also involved in allergic reactions. So we'll get to this in the fourth unit of the course. So this is a good video to talk about FC receptors and how they are used to help trigger antibody effector function.